Not for Tourists, National Film Theater, Neurofibulary Tangles. What the hell is an NFT? <laughs> Stefan Peel from Shared Reality here. By now, I'm sure you've heard the endless buzz about NFTs, or non-fungible tokens. But what are they really about? Now, there are thousands of other videos you can watch about the technology of NFTs that will help you dip your toe in as a beginner. So I'm not really gonna go over that. What we are going to discuss is the philosophy of NFTs. The most common criticism of NFTs I see is that they are inherently worthless. Although most anything can be turned into an NFT, from songs to memes to sports clips, many of the biggest projects we see today are simply JPEGs of digital art. These can be easily downloaded, saved, and used by anyone. And a large number of them, from the vantage point of a traditional art critic, aren't even that well done. So why are people paying $300,000 for a JPEG of a poorly drawn rock? We're still in the beginning stages of the NFT market, yet the joke is already becoming cliche. Someone drops an NFT, someone else saves it, and then tweets it back at them like, oh, this NFT is mine now too, haha. Ha. But the joke is actually on the Joker in this instance, because it shows a grave misunderstanding of what NFTs actually are and how this space works, which means they are missing out on a huge financial opportunity. I've seen NFTs described as Mary Kay for nerds and Beanie Babies for tech bros. And while those are admittedly much funnier jokes, they again fail to capture the full picture of what the NFT space is. NFT trading is far removed from the multi-level marketing model of Mary Kay, and unlike worthless beanie babies, as this divorcing couple later reluctantly discovered, NFTs are actually producing real profit. A lot of people struggle to wrap their heads around this because of the intangibility of the asset. If it's digital, it's recreatable, and although you can own it, you can't hold it, store it, or hide it away from the world in a way a traditional owner can with their items. So some people just can't see the value in NFTs. But that brings us to the question, what makes something inherently valuable? Hundreds and hundreds of years ago on the island of Yap, this little island east of the Philippines in between Guam and Palau, existed a payment system called Raystones. Now, these were huge coins carved out of limestone from a neighboring island, somewhere as large as 12 feet and weighed up to as much as 8,000 pounds. So even though they were being used as currency for trade, they very seldom physically traded hands. The title of the owner would just be transferred to another person that the whole village recognized as the new owner. According to Yap oral tradition, on one of these voyages transporting a large gray stone, the sailors encountered a storm and lost the stone to the bottom of the sea. When they got back to the island, they told everybody what happened and the people decided, you know, that's okay. The money's still valid, even if it is somewhere out on the ocean floor. So they added the gray stone into circulation and simply continued transferring the title of owner, even though no one ever saw that stone again. So what does this demonstrate? It shows that things are only valuable because we collectively decide that they are valuable. And there are a hell of a lot of people who have decided NFTs are valuable. What is the intrinsic value of a dollar? Practically speaking, it's worth its weight in paper and cotton and little else. It doesn't have much use beyond its symbology. It's why we as a society so easily went from cash to just numbers on a computer screen. What we use to represent money doesn't matter so much as having it to spend. Is this starting to make things click? If you're still not quite seeing why so many people see so much value and so much potential in the NFT space, then you should know many NFTs do come with some functionality. Of course, there is the opportunity to grow your investment and make money. All of them also come with bragging rights and allow you to flex by either flaunting how much money you dropped on it or showing off how cool the art is. And before you say that's stupid, that's pretty much also what you get from traditional physical art auctions as well. And unlike in-person art sales, where a buyer may fall for a very convincing forgery, NFT transactions are completely transparent. The public nature of the wallet addresses and the blockchain show each time the NFT has changed hands, and who currently holds it. So although others may save the file and try to pass it off as their own, you will actually be able to see who the true owner is. Many NFTs also come with utilities that have some functionality or offer you some benefit, often in the real world. These could be invites to exclusive events, financial kickbacks, vacations, real estate, you name it. It is up to the creator of the project to decide what utilities a token offers, if any. Again, I'm not going to get deep into anything technical because there are already a ton, ton of high quality resources on that subject matter. I'll link to a few here on YouTube if you'd like to look more into it. 
I just wanted to bring this up today specifically because if your online bubble is anything like mine, it is a buzz about NFTs lately. And I want to help you guys see the potential here so you don't miss out on this opportunity portal. You know, all the time on my money manifestation videos, my wealth affirmation videos, I get people asking for help that are really desperate to make money. They're doing their visualizations, reciting their affirmations, and checking off all the spiritual boxes to try and attract more wealth, but they're still struggling financially. We have to remember that the law of attraction requires action. In order for the universe to deliver your manifestation, it has to have an avenue of opportunity to do that, and you have to be prepared to receive. Now, I'm not saying go out, take action, throw all your money into some NFTs, it's your golden goose. But I am saying always keep an open mind to new opportunities, especially new financial opportunities. So do your research, study, gain this knowledge so you can prepare your vessel, do your due diligence, but don't wait for something to be adopted by the mainstream before you get into it, because the biggest potential for profit is always going to be in these early stages. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you got any benefit out of it at all, please be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little notifications button too, because I'm committed to bringing you three new videos a week so we can all continue learning, growing, and not only survive, but thrive in 2021 and beyond. Thank you. Love you.